Hey, I'm Jem and this is my Junji O Wrap Up Part 2. So if you don't know already, me and my friend Jess have been trying to read a Junji O every month throughout this year. We did do one in December and then we did, we've been doing one every month, although I kind of dropped the ball, so I'm a little bit behind. That's why this isn't coming out as early in the month as I was hoping. I have done one wrap up already, which was the December book and the first three books that we read. I'll link that above. I have now finally managed to read three more. We're gonna have to double up next month to get back on track, but this is on me. I've really not been great. So the three I have to talk to you about today, I'm gonna go in order that I read them. So we're gonna start with Smashed. This is probably my favourite unlinked short story collection that we've read from him so far. Genji has short story collections that all kind of link together like Uzumaki, where they're all kind of based in the same place or have the same characters or link in some way. And then he has ones that are just short horror mangas all linked together into volumes. I absolutely loved and will always love Venus in the Blind Spot because it was my introduction to him. But I think I enjoyed this one even more. So this one had some absolutely amazing short stories in it. I don't want to give too much away, but I was going to just say like maybe a couple of my favourites, but there is a lot of favourites. So there is three that kind of link together about a guy who runs a haunted house, which was the creepiest haunted house I've ever seen. So you know, like a haunted house attraction, but you know, creepy. Maybe a bit more real than it needed to be. There was one about a river that had like burst its bank and wiped out an entire village and people kept seeing it again and like trying to rescue the people. That was really cool. There was one called Library Vision where this guy had a massive library that he'd inherited from his parents and he knew where every single book was. So if one was moved, he would know and he would freak out if he couldn't find it. And I think it was his father had kind of tried to memorize the entire library and sent himself a bit crazy. And then this guy starts to show similar signs of obsession with the library. That was awesome. I think my favorite story though was Earthbound where these people all over Japan start becoming like fixed in place all in the same pose. And you know, you slowly start to uncover that these places are all things where something tragic has happened. Like there was one where a dog was killed, one where a woman had been killed, a hit and run site. And they're trying to figure out why people are doing that, what's happening, trying to save the people. This is honestly just such a good collection. Five stars easily, really loved it. I think there's like one more, so they have like this, a few collections that have these like colored size. So Frankenstein's purple, we have this one and then there's Shiver, which is blue. And I think that's one of the ones we're gonna read next. So that has made me even more excited to read that one. I'm hoping there's gonna be some killer stories in there. Oh, there was another one in this called um, Death Row Doorbell where the guy had murdered their parents or had killed them in some way. I can't remember if it was murder or it was like, I think it was murder. I think he's done for murder. He's like in a, a motorcycle gang and forces their car off the road and the parents die. And then he keeps visiting them at night and asking them for forgiveness. But he's on death row at the prison. And he's always there when they check, but he keeps turning up at the house and it's just so well done. And the guy is probably one of the creepiest things in it. Let's see if I can find a picture of him without spoilers. Here, I just think there's something so creepy about that guy. So yeah, I'm, I'm always reluctant to show you too much because I don't want to spoil things for everyone. This is like, well, I'm not even going to tell you this one, but mm, hi, that's creepy. So, <laughs> the guy's art style, perfection. Loved this. Then on to probably my favourite of any of the books we've read so far. I read Tomi. This was a bit daunting because it's very long for a manga collection. It's like 740 pages. So it is his longest work so far. 
It's also one that I think is probably most known and for good reason. There is a film knocking around. I'm going to try and get my hands on it and see if I can watch it. But this was so good. It's about this girl called Tomi. She's super beautiful. People become obsessed with her, particularly men. And when they become overly obsessed with her, she tends to end up in pieces. So she is not a nice girl. She keeps coming back from being in pieces. <laughs> there is something very, very creepy about her. She's very manipulative. She's very domineering. She has no qualms in using her beauty to get what she wants. And she really pushes. She pushes people. And for some reason, they just keep killing her. Sometimes she pushes them into it. Sometimes it's like something just clicks and they keep chopping her up. She just keeps coming back and you're just kind of finding more about her and how does she keep coming back and what is actually going on? And it's just a ride. Loved, loved, loved. Really wanna watch the film. And then lastly, I read this yesterday, so it's very fresh in my mind. We read Dissolving Classroom, which was a bit of a shock to go from this to this. I was like, oh, this would, this would be fine. I read this like on a lunch break, but I really, really enjoyed this. I gave it four stars. So, the, and four stars is still a fantastic rating. It was just weird because I've always given Genji a five stars in the past, but I've sat on this before I rated it. I didn't rate it straight away. I've kind of thought about it overnight. I think it's a four star. I don't know whether it's just because I've just read Tomy and it's so intricate and it's so detailed. This one just felt a little bit, and you, I, I shouldn't really compare. I mean, the size alone, obviously it's not gonna be as intricate. Obviously it's not gonna be as detailed. I don't know. So this is about a guy who has a real creepy sister. She's real creepy. And he apologizes a lot. But when he apologizes, people tend to get kind of melty. It says on the back, so it's not a spoiler, the devil is involved. He is obsessed with the devil. Something has happened to his sister. So we follow them from like place to place where they keep moving because people keep dying around them. So they have to keep like running away to hide their tracks and you know survive another day. Don't get me wrong, I still really loved this. I still thought it was a fantastic plot. Junjiro's plots are always really cool and really interesting. And I loved the inclusion of the devil and how it all came to play. There was a bit at the end which like really shocked me and I didn't see coming. So that was quite cool. I don't know why it just didn't hit the same as all the others. Am I less excited to continue reading his works? No, absolutely not because they're still fantastic. The art is still amazing. This is just the front cover of like the first section and you can just see the creepiness. So maybe it's a 4.5. Oh, I'm talking myself up now. <laughs> Part of me feels weird for giving Junji Yo less than five stars because I just think the guy's art alone deserves it because it's just so suited to his stories and to the genre. It's just so cool. This one, I just, maybe I just wanted a little bit more from it. Maybe it could have used like a little, I don't know. It's a 4.5. I'll give it a 4.5. So it's still like, I mean, four still a really good rating. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. I still enjoyed it. So those are my three. As I said, enjoyed them all. Probably my favorite of all time. Probably my favorite short story collection. Just, this is really good. This is really, really good. The storyline was really good. The art was really good. I don't really know what it should have done to get the full five stars. It just, it is what it is. Sometimes you just get that feeling. We already have our next two reads planned. So I have one on my shelf. I'm gonna order the next one after payday and then we just need to get one for all. September? July, August, September, yeah. Because I'm running a month behind, I keep confusing myself. So July and August reads, we're gonna read together next month and then we're gonna read a book for September, which I don't know what that's gonna be yet. I am still absolutely loving this. I just love having a spooky manga every month. 
I feel like this is going to be really short, like a really short wrap up. I don't know whether I should say more about them, but I'm really conscious that I don't want to give any spoilers in these wrap ups. And being that so much of Junjito's works are short stories, it's really easy to spoil the whole thing, which I don't want to do. If you've read any of these three, let me know what you thought of them. If you have any suggestions for which ones we should move on to next, let me know. So as I say, we have two planned, but there is open spots for the rest of the year. So we're hoping to kind of read all of them, but if you want us to prioritise ones, let me know. And if you haven't read any Genji in the past, but you would like to, let me know what you're thinking of starting with below. Um, we'll see if I've read it and whether I have any suggestions, as I say. I'm not like an expert, but I've read a few now and I would recommend them all. But I feel like I'm getting a good idea of where would be good places for people to start. Or if you just want to chat about Genji O in general, comment, let me know. My DMs are always open, I'm always looking for fellow horror buddies manga buddies, all that kind of stuff. That's it for me guys. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to. I would love to have you. I aim to post two videos a week and so far so good. We've been doing that. Thank you so, so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.